Who's a fat boy? Welcome back, my fatties, my fatty boys. Is it just fat boys to listen to this? It'd be weird if I had like a following of just fat, fat young boys that listen to this podcast. I'd be happy though if they were all getting together and you know not having low self esteem about stuff. If the podcast does that, I'd be happy for the fat boys. As a boy myself, I wasn't fat. I'm uh, chubbier later in life. That's a decision I made, though. When you're uh, chubby as a kid, yes, sometimes it's genetic, but most of the time, uh, it's 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 out of your control. It's 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 your 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 folks giving you the fish sticks too much. I feel like we all grew up on fish sticks. Some of us had bad effects to that. Others didn't. We all suffered through it. So I'm uh, just at the tail end of this cold. I don't know if you uh, listened last week. I don't know if you're a first-time listener. If you are, that's great. I like how you just jump right in on episode 12. Uh, feel free to go back. There's lots to listen listen to. But uh, I was pretty salty last week. I was swearing a lot. I was dropping a lot of fucks. When I was uh, re-listening to the episode, uh, I apologize for that. Uh, the, the word fuck is a part of my family history. It, uh, you know, it's kind of a part of our dialect, but I am pretty good at uh, closing it off for people, like when I'm around my girlfriend's family. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I, it feels good to be able to hold that in sometimes, to, to not let people know that I've got such a, a dirty mouth. So, you know, I'm going to blame that shitty cough syrup or whatever, because I don't usually go off like that. But I did last week. So I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling better. I just got a little bit of post-nasal drip happening. That's still still bothering me a bunch. Um, You know, that feeling when uh, you're not really that congested anymore, but you just feel like you're choking on the back of your throat somehow. Uh, I've had to deal with that for a while. The Neti Pot Extreme. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration, by the way. If you haven't heard the last episode, go back, listen to the demonstration. Of me doing the uh, the uh, battery powered neti pot, um, it does work good for post nasal drip, <clears throat> but I'm just kind of getting sick of it because I've been using it so much over the last week, and I'm running out of saline. Oh, if you um, also could do me a favor, guys, look, I know how hard it is to rate for these things. I've looked at other podcasts, really popular podcasts that are on iTunes, and I don't know if it's just Canada or what. But not a lot of people rate them on iTunes. It's very rare. Some of the best shows like Serial and stuff, they only have like 600, 600 to 700 uh, ratings. That's not a lot if you think of a whole country. Is just no one in this country listening to podcasts? Is that it? It's really frustrating. And you know what? It's also because it's free hard. Because one thing is you need an Apple ID. And a lot of people are down with Apple now. I don't even know if you... You have an Apple ID anymore. Some people resent it. That's fine. But you need an Apple ID, okay, to be able to rate on iTunes. A lot of people do. Second thing is trying to get to the rating page is impossible. But I figured out a way. And now I got a link right in my description. All you got to do is click where it says here. It says click here, rate on iTunes. Just click the here. It's highlighted. And uh, it'll take you right to the page. Take you right to the app on your phone, or if you're on your web browser, it'll take you to iTunes, open up, you'll see ratings, reviews, click, click, done. Two seconds, guys. I have the button. So I'm just trying to get some more reviews because you, you gotta, I gotta show them five stars, you know? Gotta show them five stars, son. So that's new. What's new with you guys? Did any of you guys uh, eat something greasy in the last week? Do I got any vegans out there that that ate a, a nasty, uh, you know, cheeseless pizza? Yeah, dipped it in some olive oil. Maybe had a vegan poutine. 
Uh, anyone have like uh, a burger? I've been really craving burgers a lot lately. I never usually eat burgers. I went years just eating veggie burgers. Uh, and and suddenly it's like I'm getting a hankering for it. And maybe it is because I have low iron. Maybe I'm craving the flesh. Maybe I'm craving a little bit of that uh, that metal in the blood. Um. So yeah, I hope you uh, you get a splurge every once in a while. That's why I'm hoping that even even the vegs, the veggies, the pescatarian, which I used to be for two months, you got every once in a while eat something greasy. I just had a greasy fried egg. Yeah, I haven't had a fried egg. I've been eating just poached eggs for well over a year. Really got sick of over easy eggs. Just something about it. For one, at restaurants, they can never do it right. Some places do, obviously, but it's 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 an egg to fuck up, the over easy egg. It's an egg to fuck up. So I gave up and I and you know, I figure it's healthier to to boil an egg in water than to fry it in butter or fat or whatever the else the fuck is on this stove. So that's why I switched to, I don't know, I feel a little bit cleaner after it. But I can't think about eggs too long because the whole thing makes me sick. I can't look at that yolk and think about what it is. I think if anything were to turn me into a vegetarian or a vegan, I guess it would have to be vegans. How many vegetarians eat eggs? To turn me into a vegan, I, it would maybe be eggs. It'd be runny ass fucking eggs that I love, but can't think of. It's pretty gross. Uh, I am toasting the town with a cold beverage. Um, you're wrong if you think it's a craft beer. It is not a craft beer. It is a classic domestic Canadian lager with the name Canadian in it. Ah, I love a beer like that. You look him at the at the cottage, sitting on the dock, whistling at birds. <laughs> what should I talk about next? What do you want? Okay, I've been listening to a new podcast, guys, and it's health related, celebrity health related. Now there are, you know a bunch of celebrities that are kind of the goal to get to talk to at some point. And they're related in the health. You know, we talked about Hal and, Hal and uh, Joanne from the uh, Body Break. That'd be an uh, interesting one to do a, an interview with. I think of fucking Tony Little and fucking Suzanne Summers, Jane Fonda. Who am I missing? Richard Simmons. That guy would be the absolute... The 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 uh, having a health podcast, and having Richard Simmons on it would be insane. It'd be so hilarious because he's so amped. But the problem with Richard Simmons is he's disappeared. And there's a podcast now that his friends started called Missing Richard Simmons, and they're trying to find him because he just he just left. He didn't say anything to any of his friends. He just like stayed in his house and never came out. It's been like three years. And it's really interesting. They've done two episodes so far. And it's just interesting to hear a little bit about this guy. And like, you know, he really helped a lot of people. He wasn't just this like excited, crazy fitness guy that was happy being the butt of jokes on Letterman, you know, like he, he, he really cared about people. And he had a lot of friends, a lot of close friends, and then he just disappeared. And it's just so fascinating to even think of any celebrity being able to do that. So anyways, I don't want to give away too much anyway, but uh, Missing Richard Simmons on iTunes and Stitcher and whatnot. You should check it out. Definitely someone that I got to get on the pod. Maybe I'll be the one to find him. And that'll be the last episode of Missing Richard Simmons. The only person he would talk to was Podcast Fat Boy. Oh my God. Just um, imagining him coming here and, and... like doing Get Down the Pounds or one of his videos. Like, I'd love to record us watching one of his old fitness tapes and doing it. And But him not being him, just like being a regular person <laughs> watching the tape. We're just, two, we're just two guys watching Richard Simmons' tape. I bet you'd be into that. I don't know if I could handle his fitness class. It seems uh, 
pretty intense in a lot of ways. Slimmons in L.A. Probably check it out. I'm still looking for a new doctor. If there's any doctors listening to the podcast, I have a doctor I have right now I don't have a good relationship with. So there was a clinic near me opening up and they were taking new patients. So I went to that and I had an interview. I think I talked about it before, but I'm not feeling that one either. And you're probably thinking, Matt, it is so hard to find a doctor. Just grab a doctor, get a physical once a year and leave it alone. I don't like that. I like to to know that they don't necessarily have to give a shit about my life, but I got to be able to trust them with some questions that I have. So I've got this other one that my that, that my G friend went to a place on the east side. And it's all state of the art apparently. No receptionist, just an iPad. I like the sounds of that already. I don't have to deal with a moody receptionist. What a dream. So I'm going to, uh, in March, have a sit down with a new doctor, see what that's like. And I might just sign the papers right there, transfer my med rex right over. End it all, you know what I mean? It's one thing about Canada. You know, we do have, as they say, free health care which is not entirely true. I mean, we paid through our taxes, but we don't have to pay crazy premiums and insurance and all this shit like in the States. That's why Obamacare is so much, you know, you can't afford this shit. Obamacare was for that. What the hell? You got a billionaire president trying to take that away from poor people. What are they going to do then? Oh, we'll think of something better. Let's take it away first, though, because my idea will come overnight. And we'll be able to replace it and they'll be fine. No, like thousands of people are probably going to die because they don't have Obamacare anymore. That's the truth. That's what's going to happen, Trumpy. And what are we going to do when he dies and he's in his golden casket? He won't be able to hear our knocks on the coffin door, Trump. You won't be able to hear our concerns, you big jerk. The weather is very mild outside. Uh, We've got a temperature of... (laughs) This is the weather report halfway through. It's episode 12. You're going to get a weather report. It's very mild in Toronto. I think winter's over. We still got like 25 days, 23 days left of winter on the map. But uh, looking at the forecast, it doesn't look like we're going to be getting much snow. Really poor ass looking winter this year. Not good. Not a good sign. Nice for weather. This is kind of like my kind of weather. If I, you know, can just kind of be cool and be able to wear long sleeves and stuff and jeans. That's heaven. That's Canadian heaven right there. Pour a little maple syrup on it. Get a little back bacon on there, bud. And you're fucking, you're just, you're, you're singing fucking Christ hymns to me there, bud. It's my fucking heaven. I thought I was going to cool it on those fucks. Sorry, guys. I'm sure the count's down, though. I have not been um, unleashing them like the last time. Let's be honest. So we got mild weather. My health recap coming up hot off the vine. I am disinterested with food. I hate food. Um, but it's good because I'm losing weight. I'm now down to 222 pounds. I'm almost the weight that I say I am at auditions. By the way, had an audition today. You want to hear about it? You guys like hearing about the stars and their life? Had an audition today. And it was one of those ones where the, like the call was for not a fit man. Someone that's not a fit man who who will go shirtless for a price. Um, if the script's not funny enough, uh, hopefully your body will be. One of them, one of those, uh, makes you feel like a real dancing monkey, one of those, those auditions. So I went in for that, and I just 
wasn't feeling it right from the get go. Unfortunately, I had to go in with like a, a friend that I know in the community. You know, you, you kind of want to go in with someone you don't know. You're not feeling it, but uh, it went okay, ish. But like, I I. I, I did not dress the part. I did not look. You could tell that I did not really care. So I just find it very hard, especially in this state of mind that I'm in, to, you know, think about if I have these issues with certain things about my body, to dance around and flaunt those issues for money seems kind of cheap and belittling. And I definitely know, I definitely know I did not get this role. So, so thank goodness for my mental health. But saying that, I do feel a bit better about my body because I'm not, I'm drinking more water. That's what it is. I'm drinking a ton more water. I fill up a huge pitcher. I've measured it. It's 1.6 liters full of water every day, and I make sure that I drink that at least. I should be drinking almost two of those. But that's a big step up because let me tell you, I don't need much water to function, which is not good because like my body hates me because you know some days I don't drink water. But if you're ever looking for a comrade to walk through the desert with who's not going to need too many sips from the from the, the the canvas pouch of water the thermos I'm your man I'm your man you won't have to worry you're not get like if we start drinking each other's piss for water you're not going to want to drink mine because it's going to be it's not going to be a color you like it's not going to be clear <laughs> it's not going to be cold hot water it's not going to be hot water I'll tell you that but I will carry you in my bag. I don't need water. Fuck water. Anyways, I am trying to drink a lot more water. It does make me feel better. I kind of feel like I'm on speed when I drink it. <laughs> that's that's how little water I drink sometimes. That when I do drink it, I have so much energy because every cell in my body is dehydrated. And it suddenly comes back to life. And I feel like a million... I feel like a million Dalmatians... 101 of them, at least. Sorry, I have Dalmatians in my brain, but apparently Richard Simmons has a lot of Dalmatians. And Dalmatians are the worst fucking dog. I gotta say, I've been around a lot of dogs in my life. They they just... I don't ever want a Dalmatian, unless it's a cartoon. It's the only Dalmatian I'll ever want. A couple more things to talk about. Because we're getting there to the end. You know it. I know it. Next week, we're going to have a guest. We're going to have Billy Hoosh on. Billy Hoosh. I don't know who's been listening to the podcast, but people have been going back to some of the older episodes. Episode 5, Yo-Yo Diet, Ma. Maybe it's just a funny title. I don't know. But it's getting a lot of hits. Billy Hoosh was on it. We have a good talk about a lot of things. Um, You should definitely check it out if you haven't listened to it. It's fun. Talk about carny food, a crazy diet where he's, you know, starving himself for a while. So he's in San Francisco now. We're going to talk to him over the phone, see what's going on out there, see how life's treating him. I've been looking through the uh, the intraweb. I look through the intraweb for, for health things. You know, it's not just me ranting like an idiot. May I take a sip of uh, the old uh, Molson? Molson Canadian found this article in the Globe and Mail it's by um, it's by a writer named Leah McLaren it really caught my eye because I'm always thinking of like what are people doing like what's the what's the diet everybody's hot on right now or what, what's you know what's working for people what might work for me so Leah McLaren, her article says, uh, Paleo, CrossFit, and the Art of Joyless Living. <laughs> so that caught my attention because immediately I'm like, yeah, this, you know, to be healthy sucks. It's usually pretty joyless. So the paleo diet is essentially 
eating and exercising like you are a fucking caveman. Your exercise is short bursts, like you're running from a saber-toothed tiger, as she writes. And your diet is kind of, you know, what they would eat. Not a lot of, I don't think any sugar. Mainly boiled chicken or cooked chicken and seeds. (laughs) So I found a couple things in this article I wanted to talk about. Just to explain it better, the paleo diet is essentially an ultra-low carb diet which prompts the body to burn fat by putting it in a state of ketosis. Now, during ketosis, the body runs out of sugar, so it starts to burn fat. You might think of it as the first phase of long-term starvation. This is why paleo enthusiasts are generally very thin and bad-tempered. In essence, they are semi-permanently starving. (sighs) Ah, <sighs> well, I kind of feel, you know how I, I just said earlier that I'm disinterested with food? Maybe this is what I need to do because I have an app that I use called a seven-minute circuit training workout. You can do it in a small room. All you need is a chair and it's very intense and I can never get through the seven minutes without having to pause and gasp and belittle myself. But it's very intense, and I think that it would. If I just did that app three times a week, four times a week, that seven minute workout. This is what I've always thought that that's all I need to do to lose a bunch of weight, along with a better diet, because that's the other part of the paleo workout, the one minute workout a best-selling book by McMaster kinesiology professor Martin Gibala outlines how he and his team over a period of 10 years of research were able to prove definitively that a person could perform an interval workout containing only 2.5 minutes of high-intensity exercise three times a week and reap roughly the same fitness benefits or more than the same person working out moderately uh, for 4.5 hours a week. So recap, 2.5 minutes, three times a week. That's seven and a half minutes of high-intensity workout a week. Same as 4.5 hours a week. It's all clicking up here. I don't know about you, but this is what we need. We just need to be chased by saber-toothed tigers. Because if that, I don't think any of them <laughs> set out to do that as a workout. You want to go for a jog? You want to go for a jog in front of a saber-toothed tiger? No. I don't want anything to do with the Yellow Ranger. Oh, deep cut. Deep cut from Podcast Fat Boy. Thank God you're here for that. If you understand what I meant by uh, that, <laughs> tweet into the show. You win a popsicle. I got popsicles in my pocket. You win one. So anyway, that's the paleo diet. I'm thinking that uh, that might be something for me, just eating, uh, you know, uh, boiled chicken and seeds and doing a a two-and-a-half-minute workout every day where I just, like, flap around like an insane person jumping up and down on furniture. I bet you it works better than anything. It's probably what Richard Simmons is doing right now in his house. He's fucking just swinging off chandeliers. He's probably just playing Xbox or something. Leave the guy alone. He's playing Xbox. What's his Xbox, his account name, so we, I can add him? I don't have Xbox. Does he have a PlayStation 4? What's his PlayStation 4 name? Somebody figure this out. Okay? If, if, the, if the podcast is trying to find him, can send me his, his PlayStation 4 game name tag. I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't use this shit be just fun to play hockey with him or something <sighs> been a bit of a doozy this one hasn't it um before i wrap up the one thing that's not really fitness related but i'm gonna make it fitness related there was a bit of an altercation on the public transit today now, we've got a lot of douchebags in this city. I think uh, across the country, we're kind of known as like a douchebaggy city. Like people hate us. They have penis envy and all that stuff. That's okay. I understand. I can understand how the, you know, it's a, it's, it's a busy, bustling city, but we're friendly and we love you. You can say what you want about us. 
But there was an altercation, and it was between two people who um, are of a larger weight. And this is how I'm tying it into uh, a health-related thing. Um, essentially, a gentleman would uh, had his feet up on the seat on the street on the um, subway. He had his feet on the seat, and, and a lady sat, a big lady sat right on his feet, and refused to move. And there's a video of them talking, him pretty much yelling at her while she's just sitting on his feet trying to make a point. I just want to play a little bit of it because it's kind of an insane th- thing to see. It's like some weird sketch that's going on. Well, I can hear you loud I don't give a I don't care. I don't care. Get off me. Can you get off me, please? No, I'm sorry. I can't. Hey, you can't take your fat self off. Don't you agree to come sit on other people? The fat self has got a big mouth. I know I have a big mouth, and I'm using it. Cause God and you're fat, too. I love my fat self. Thank you. Okay, well, then we're equal. Because I'm trying to explain to you that your feet shouldn't be on the okay, seat. Okay, but why does it matter to you? I because I'm the a f- I want to. No, if you my can't be. No, this Do is you own the subway? Let me ask you a serious question. Do you own the subway? Do you? Do you? Do you? No. Then how can you do whatever you want? Is there a rule on the street that says I can't put my foot on the seat right now? Well, it's not. It's a social rule. Okay, so I can take myself and just go like that. Right? Thank you. Get off me. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, as you as you heard, the one guy's trying to berate her about being fat, and then she's like, while sitting on his feet, is like, "Well, you're fat too," and he's like, "Yeah, I am fat. I love my fat," and he starts jiggling his boobs. Oh, it's so funny. Such a weird little thing, and this guy, this guy, this this little douchey, just sitting there with his uh, shoes on the seat. Now I'm looking at these two, and I hope, I hope the story after this is that they became gym buddies. Okay, that's my health hope. They became gym buddies, and they're not going to call each other fat anymore. Okay, that's the the meanest shit you can say to someone is making fun of calling them fat. Don't ever do that. Okay, little kids, listen to this podcast. Should be listening. It's explicit. Don't be calling people fat. So I hope they're gym buddies right now. I hope they're not like gym buddies on The Biggest Loser because they get treated like slaves. That show's fucking insane. But um, I hope they've made amends. And maybe, maybe they're dating. I don't know. Maybe and yeah, like maybe she <laughs> sits on his feet now for a whole bunch of other reasons. Okay, enough of me talking about this. This is so stupid. Um, thanks, guys. Uh, wow, stretched a little bit longer. I didn't think I'd talk that long. Um, if you could click that link and you know rate whatever, rate whatever you want, that'd be great. Next week, we're going to have a guest. It's going to be great. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.